All right, 11.6 notes, segment relationships in circles. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. I don't think it's going to be too bad for us. We're nearing the end of the chapter. We only have one more section left, and that's on equations of a circle. Um, so let's get right into the first one. The first one is called the chord-chord product theorem. Now, if you remember from yesterday, yesterday we were interested in the angles and the arcs that two chords uh, intercept. Today we're wanting to know about the lengths of the chords. So the first theorem, the chord-chord product theorem, um, basically says that when you have a chord like AB right here, um, the distance from A to E multiplied by the distance from B to E should equal the other two pieces times together. So I like to kind of think of this one as, you know, piece times piece equals piece times piece. That's kind of the way that, that I remember these ones. So we go through and, and looking at this one, let's kind of do the blue chord. So I'm going to do 12 times 21 should equal, and then we'll do this other one in red, 18 times X. And we go ahead and we, we solve this one out. And 12 times 21, well, that's 240 plus another 21. So that would be 261 equals 18x. Divide both sides by 18. And that will give us, what is that going there? 261 divided by 18. 14.5. Now that's x. And if we wanted to find, because the directions actually say, you know, find the length of each chord. Um, the blue chord would would then well the blue chord is pretty easy because I already have both those numbers I just add up 12 plus 21 that one is 30 or actually I'm the blue chord should be 33 and then when we do the red chord uh, the red chord is 18 plus 14.5 so that one's going to be 32.5 now notice the lengths of the chords do not have to be equal the lengths are different. Sometimes you have a long chord and a short chord, but when you multiply their pieces, it ends up being the same. All right, let's go to the next example over here. Um, we have 24 times 10 should equal 16 times x. So that's 240 equals 16x. Divide both sides by 16. And I believe that's going to go in there 15 times. So x is 15, and now when I go ahead and I and I work this one out, um, the blue chord here is 34, and the red chord here would have a length of 31. So again, notice the chords are not the same length, but the product of their segments is equal. When you multiply the segments together, they are equal. All right, so that's the chord chord. So let's move on down and go into the next one. The next one's called the secant product theorem. Um, secant, secant. So a secant is basically, you know, so, so let me just kind of refresh real quick. When you have a line like this, we learn that when you come and you touch at just one point, that was called a tangent. Um, we also have that when you go from corner to corner and your endpoints lie in a circle, that is called a chord. And then... A secant is basically any line that comes flying in and cuts through the circle, and it may even keep on going, but this line is called a secant. Its endpoints are not on the circle. One of them lies outside the circle. So when we're talking about pieces, that's kind of the, the description of what each one is. So the secant-secant product theorem basically says um, it's kind of similar, but it's not piece times piece. It's basically the whole secant times the outside portion equals the whole secant times the outside portion of the other one. So let's let's kind of take this one into, into play here. So on the first one, the whole, the whole secant, so let's go all the way from R to T. So I do R to T times the outside piece, which would just be RS. That's got to be equal to this whole piece here, RQ, times the outside piece, which is RP. 
So whole times outside, whole times outside. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our numbers in here. So R to T, that distance is 10. And R to S is 4. So that one's not too bad. This next one's a little tricky. Um, the distance from R to Q, I can't really just add these two up because I don't know what X is. So I'm just going to have to write it as 5 plus X. And then the distance from R to P is 5. I do have the outside distance. So now let's solve this algebra equation. I have 40 equals, and here I can distribute. I have 25 plus 5x, and now I'm just going to solve this equation. I'm going to minus 25 from both sides, bring my 5x down, 40 take away 25 is 15, and divide, divide, and I find out that the length of x is actually 3. So now I can find the length of the two secants. This one is 10, which I already knew from earlier. And now I know that this one is 8. So R to Q is 8. All right, you can pause the video and try the one on the right and see how you do. I'm going to come back and solve it here in a second. All right, solving this one here, I do the whole piece, all of that times just the outside is going to equal the whole piece, make sure to put that in parentheses, times just the outside, do my algebra, 168 is 49 plus 7x, I just distributed that 7 there, and minus 49 from both sides, I get, what's that, 119? And then divide by 7, divide by 7, and x7 goes in there 1, 17 times. So x is actually 17. So now I can find the total distance on the bottom. The total distance on the bottom is 24. So that's called the secant secant. Very similar to the, to the one up above, just a little bit different theorem. And then we finally have the last one. And the last one is when you have a secant and a tangent. And it's, it's actually the exact same as the last one. It's whole times outside. And then they say equals tangent squared. But that's really the same thing as the whole times the outside. It's just the whole is the outside. So uh, however you want to look at it, it doesn't really matter. But it's a similar idea. So let's do this one. Um, so we're going to do the whole piece. The secant's whole piece, that's 9, times the outside equals the tangent squared, or the whole times the outside, which would be x times x. So we solve this. x squared is 36. Take the square root of both sides, and I find out that x equals 6. So that's the missing length we're looking for. Let's try this next one. We're going to do the whole, which is 7 plus y, times the outside, which is 7. And then we're going to do the tangent squared. So we have 49 plus 7y, I just distributed there, equals 100. Subtract 49 from both sides, you get 7y equals 51. And this one's going to be, looks like a decimal. Um, 7 goes into 51, that's going to be 7 and 2 sevenths, you know, or it could be a, a decimal if you'd like to turn it into a decimal, 7 and 2 sevenths for y. Alright, and now I believe, I don't think there's any more examples ready, now I believe we start the practice, so go ahead and you can begin the practice now and you're going to get some time in class, but... Uh, this is what we're going to be focusing on tomorrow. See ya.